Good evening and Erev Tov. My name is Erwin Levin and I'll be facilitating the program this evening. I want to thank each one of you for coming because your being here tonight allows me to have a community to share my feelings with and I hope this evening will do the same for you. First, a couple of housekeeping matters. Please, please, please turn off your cell phones right now. I'll give you a moment to do that, and I want to warn you that if your cell phone goes off tonight, that is a signal to the Jewish Federation of Greater Indianapolis that you wish to double your pledge. <laughs> so please be very careful on this very serious night not to have you to be that guy. Secondly, I've been asked how long this program is anticipated to last. My guess is that the program will be between an hour and a quarter and an hour and a half, but I warn you that that is on Jewish time. <laughs> to start our program tonight, I would now like to welcome the students from the Haston Hebrew Academy their parents and staff members who will lead us in the Star Spangled Banner and Hatikva. If they could come forward, please. Could everyone please rise?
Please be seated. You certainly don't have to uh, applaud for any of the speakers tonight, but how about a round of appreciation for the future? <laughs> Thank you, Haston Hebrew Academy. I would like to now ask you to please welcome Helen Kurlander Goldstein, President of the Jewish Federation of Greater Indianapolis. shorter than Irwin by about a foot. Um, good evening, everyone. Thank you for being here to stand with our community in solidarity with the state of Israel and the Jewish people. Being here under these circumstances is heartbreaking. But there's strength in all of us coming together as a community, as one. I want to thank the leadership of Congregation Beth El Zedek for welcoming us with open arms on such short notice when we contacted them just a few hours ago. I also want to thank the lay, the, the lay leadership and the staff for the Jewish Federation and the Jewish Community Relations Council who have worked tirelessly over this weekend to make this event happen. This evening's program is an opportunity for our community to gather to support each other and the state of Israel. I want to welcome Rabbi Hal Shevitz to the Bima, who will share his reflection on the current situation. Good evening. I'm Rabbi Hal Shevitz, and on behalf of our lay leadership, staff, Cantor Melissa Cohen, and Rabbis Emeriti, Dennis and Sandy Sasso, I would like to welcome you to Congregation Beth El Zedek for this community gathering in solidarity with Israel. The last three days have brought sadness, horror, shock, anger, frustration, and so many other emotions that are difficult to articulate. Our fellow Jews in Israel have been subjected to a senseless slaughter on a scale of magnitude and depravity that has not been experienced by the Jewish people since the Holocaust. Living here so far away, it can feel helpless as we are unable to really assist our fellow Jews in distress. But we can draw strength from our solidarity and the unity that our brothers and sisters in Israel are exhibiting as they confront the forces that have attacked them. We pray that those who do evil are brought to justice, those who are safe remain protected, those who have lost loved ones find comfort, those who have been taken captive are quickly rescued, and that all of the people of Israel are girded with strength so that peace may ultimately prevail in the Jewish state. Adonai oz la'amo yitain, Adonai yivarech et amo shalom. May God grant strength to the Jewish people and may God bless us with peace. Amen. We'd like to welcome uh, Dennis and Sandy Sasso who will lead us in the prayer for the state of Israel. Thank you, Rabbi Shevitz. The 12th century Spanish Jewish poet Yehuda Halevi said, Libi be Mizrach va Anochi be Sof ma'arav. My heart is in the east and I in the distant west. Tonight and always, our hearts are in the east with our brothers and sisters in Israel. We pray tonight for their safety, well-being, their joy, their peace. Avinu Sheba Shamaim Tzur Israel Vegoalo, Barechet Medinat Israel, Shetehei Reshit Smichat Geulateinu, Hagen Aleha Beevrat Hasdecha, 
ufros aleha sukat shlomecha, ushlach orcha v'amitecha l'rashecha sarecha v'yoatzecha, v'taknem be'etza tova milfanecha, hazek et yedei meginei eretz kadshenu, v'kanhilem elocheinu yeshua, v'ateret nitzachon te'atrem, v'natata shalom ba'aretz, v'simchat olam le'yoshvea, v'nomar, Amen. Eloheinu velohei avotenu ve'imotenu, our God and God of our ancestors, Zor Yisrael v'goalo, rock and redeemer of Israel. Bless the state of Israel, the promise of our redemption. Be her shield of love, her shelter of peace. May we who live in lands of freedom remember that we are one, responsible to one another, for all our brothers and sisters in Israel and in all lands. We pray for comfort for the mourners, healing for the wounded, release of those held hostage, and safety for all who have taken shelter. Guide Israel's leaders and advisors in the spirit of truth. Instruct them with your good counsel and your wisdom. Strengthen the hands of those who build and defend our land. Deliver them from danger. Crown their efforts with success. Grant peace to the land and lasting joy to all her people. Adonai Ozliya Moitain. Adonai Yivarech et Amo Bashalom. May God grant strength to his people, the strength that will bring peace. Amen. My name is my name is Cheka Markey. I'm here as the I'm, as the executive director of the Indianapolis Jewish Community Relations Council, or JCRC, which is a public policy, advocacy, and bridge building arm of the Indianapolis Jewish community. I want to thank all of you for coming today to stand in solidarity with the Jewish community and the state of Israel. In particular, to our non-Jewish friends and partners from various faith and cultural communities in the area. I cannot say how much this means that you are here in support in such a trying hour. I would also like to thank all of our elected officials and their representatives who are here today. These include Mayor Joe Hogsett, Senator Greg Good, Senator Travis Holdman, Senator Kyle Walker, Representative Becky Cash, Representative Victoria Garcia Wilburn, Representative Kerry Hamilton, Representative Julia McGuire, Sen Senator J.D. Four, Representative Donna Shibley, former Senator John Ruckelhaus, Senator Ryan Lauer, as well as Carmel Councilwoman Sue Finkham, Carmel Councilman Miles Nelson, former Indiana City Councilman Jefferson Shreve, former Secretary of Commerce Brad Chambers, and representatives from a number of our, our local offices. We know our senators and some of our representatives uh, could not be here today, but specifically Tyler Warman representing Governor Holcomb's office, Monica Kozlowski from Senator Todd Young's office, and Steve Carter and Jacob Harkin from Senator Braun's office. And my apologies if there's anyone we, we miss. Again, we, it means so much that you are here today, and we thank the our elected officials who, have, who aren't here who have sent such powerful words of support. We hear you, we, we know it matters, and we thank you so much. It's my privilege now to share a letter that we received from the office of the governor, Eric Holcomb. Um, you're going to hear in a little bit something about Mayor Lipstein from the Shar HaNegev region of Israel. Just last month, I was privileged to have lunch with Mayor Lipstein and Governor Holcomb. And Governor Holcomb was very effusive about his trips to Israel and his relationship uh, with the Israeli people, and I think that comes out in this letter, which I will share with you. My friends, 
Earlier today, in accordance with the authority vested in me as governor, I hereby ordered that the flags of the United States of America and Indiana be flown at half-mast to honor the lives lost this past weekend to the hands of terrorists. Flags are to be lowered to half staff on all state properties from today through Sunday, October 15, 2023. Also in the coming days, I will proudly raise an Israeli flag at the official governor's residence to symbolize our national and state solidarity in standing with our friends and allies in Israel during these stressful times. From good and growing days to those strained by times of turmoil and tragedy like today, our people have bonded over the years in unbreakable ways. This latest brut brutally directed Hamas land, air, and sea invasion into Israel brings the cruel reminder that terrorism seeks war, not peace. The over 2,200 rockets initially launched into civilian neighborhoods, the long list of civilian men, women, and children killed and injured, and the hostages taken are all tear-jerking, especially knowing this war Hamas has planned and sought is the war they will get and will unfold over the course of an uncertain future. I have seen firsthand how close the enemy sleeps and waits to strike. I ask our Congress and President to unequivocally ensure Israel receives the timely support it needs in this hour of darkness. International disputes will occur and be debated in a civilized world, but war crimes and terrorism can never be tolerated, nor given safe haven for peace to survive. I ask all Hoosiers so inclined to pray for the nation of Israel and our shared families that call this Holy Land home. Hoosiers looking to do more than that can visit the Jewish Agency for Israel, North American Council, at www.jafina.org. I will remain in contact with Israeli government officials and pass on all helpful information. May God continue to look over thee. Eric J. Holcomb, Governor. <clears throat> I have been given the privilege of sharing a few words with you, which I do with much humility in light of the other speakers that you will hear from tonight. Since last Saturday morning, as Rabbi Shevitz commented, we have all experienced so many emotions. We felt angry, depressed, overwhelmed, helpless, fearful, and shaken to the core. We continue to grieve with those who grieve and yet maintain our strong hopes and our belief in the Israeli people. Tonight, we're here as one to support our Israeli brothers and sisters, as well as to support each other. It has been said by Israeli officials that we are standing on the precipice of an existential event. October 7, 2023 was the single deadliest 24 hours in Jewish history since the Holocaust. Take a minute to think about that. As one congressman said yesterday, if you murder, rape, and abduct civilians as Hamas has done, you are not a militant. You are a terrorist. Hamas is a terrorist organization just like the Taliban, Al-Qaeda, and ISIS are terrorist organizations. Since 2001, no one in the mainstream media has described the 9-11 attackers as militants. They are called terrorists. And we must not allow the media to ever refer to the people who committed these acts as anything other than terrorists. Israel and the Jewish people crave peace, but no, that peace cannot be achieved with terrorists. Our enemies fight because they hate what is in front of them. Our soldiers fight because they love what is behind them. 
Tonight, we come together as one, not just to comfort one another, but to proudly stand tall and say that this savagery will not be allowed to stand, that Jewish blood is not cheap, and that we who are not asked to put our lives and the lives of our children on the line will support those who do in every way possible. And we are not here tonight because we're religious or because we are secular. We're not here because we're Ashkenazim or because we are Svardim or because of any of the other distinctions that make us such a vibrant people. We're not here because we necessarily are even overtly active within the Jewish community. But when Israel is threatened, we all are threatened. And from the most involved of us to the least involved of us, we know that. And collectively, we're not even here just because we're Jews, because we have many friends here tonight of different faiths. We are here because we had no choice but to be here tonight. Just as Israel has no choice but to do what it must to survive. Stand up for Israel, stand up for Jerusalem, stand up for peace. Am Yisrael Chai. It's now my pleasure to introduce Adi Gal. Adi grew up in Indianapolis, but now most of his family is living back in Israel. Adi is currently an airline pilot and served in the Israeli Navy as a chayal boded, a lone soldier. Thank you, Adi, for your service. Adi's mother, Ruth Gal, who many of you uh, knew, who once resided in Indianapolis, worked for Jewish Family Services and is well known for having played music for the elderly at Hooverwood, the JCC, and the Haston Hebrew Academy. Adi will be reading a statement from the Israel Council General. Adi? Good evening. Dear members of the greater Indianapolis Jewish community, over the weekend, we witnessed one of the darkest days in history of the State of Israel. On Shabbat and during the sacred Jewish holiday of Simchat Torah, Hamas terrorists lost an, launched an unprovoked and unprecedented massacre against Israel. More than 900 men, women, and children were massacred. Around 100, including children, mothers, and Holocaust survivors were kidnapped and are held hostage by Hamas in Gaza. Like so many of us in Israel, many of you know someone who has spent nights in a bomb shelter or has shared news about a missing loved one. We are all appalled and horrified by the stories, pictures, and videos coming out of Israel. As we grieve together, we must remain resolved in our shared mission to defend our home against those who seek to disseminate our Jewish homeland. It must be clear now is the beginning of our war to eradicate the threat posed by Hamas and Islamic Jihad to our civilian population. It will not be easy. Your support and solidarity for Israel will be critical in the coming days and weeks. I know you will stand up against those who do not believe in Israel's right to exist. I want to thank the many of you who have already reached out to us at the consulate in Israel to offer your support. Israel's unwavering bond and commitment to the Jewish diaspora helps to maintain a spiritual connection that is woven into the fabric of our nation. I know that together we will overcome this devastating time for Israel. I know this because good will always prevail over evil, and Israel will do whatever she needs to prevail. Am Yisrael Chai. I was also given the privilege um, to make a speech as an Israeli and as a resident of Indianapolis. Um, I was asked by my good friend and community leader, Helen Goldstein, to speak briefly about the feelings I have regarding this heartbreaking time that we are experiencing in our collective Jewish story. 
My name is Adi Gal. I'm an Israeli American. My family moved to Indianapolis in 2001. In 2014, I moved back to Israel to join the Israeli Defense Forces. Uh, I was a combat soldier in the Israeli Navy. Our role was to protect and ensure the safety of all of Israel's all of Israel from any threat coming from the sea. My ship spent over 600 hours per month patrolling the waters from the Egypt-Gaza border up to the Israeli-Gaza border. During that time, we prevented countless terrorist attacks, we stopped weapons smuggling operations, and we stopped drug smuggling operations um, that came from Gaza into Israel. As a former Israeli soldier, as in a son of an Israeli in general, these last two days have been heartbreaking. I've spent my time reaching out to family members, to friends, and to, zo to those that I served with, seeing if they're safe. And I've constantly just been on social media trying to understand and see what's going on on the ground. Luckily, my family is safe, but so many can't say the same. When Helen asked me to speak today, the first thing that came to my mind was, what can I say that hasn't already been said? What can I say to make this any easier? All I feel is heartbreak, sadness, anger, helplessness. But as I'm reminded of the questions that I was always asked by many who I served with in the Army, is why would an American with a comfortable life come and volunteer their time to serve in the IDF? And I reminded them that Israel's not only theirs, Israel's all of ours. Israel is in the heart of every Jew all around the world. There's not one person in this room that doesn't have a friend, a family member, a memory, a personal history with our beloved Israel. As Jews, it is our responsibility to take care of Israel in whatever way we can. For me at that time, it was to give my life to the army, and since then, it has been to advocate for her. As I've spoken with family and friends, their initial response to what is happening is immense sadness and shock. There's not a single person in Israel who doesn't have a connection to someone who was injured, murdered, or kidnapped. The pain and shock in their appearance and their voice is profound. As the conversations continue, they shift from despair to strength. They are united in supporting each other, regardless of any political situations, because in the end of the day, we don't have any other country. We as Jews have known tragedies. We allow ourselves to feel the pain of those who have hurt us. But what sets us apart from others is that we know how to collectively unite and make our world a better and stronger place. For the majority of us, the fight for Israel is not on the battlefield, but will be within our community to educate those who are either misinformed or uninformed. Additionally, it is to support our allies who are speaking up for us in a time where speaking for Israel and for the Jews is dangerous, and we cannot take that for granted. All of us have an important part to play in helping overcome this challenging time. We have each other, we have our history, and we have our faith. Am Yisrael Chai. Thank you, Adi, for that extremely powerful, powerful message. I really appreciate it. Thank you. My son, Eitan, lives in South Tel Aviv. Every night since the war began, he spends in a bomb shelter. During the day, he helps as much as he can. He ferries soldiers who are going on reserve duty to the border when buses aren't running and helps whenever anyone is needed. He, along with Adi, was also a lone soldier. I am extremely proud that he is there doing what he can for our people. 
Eitan sends me texts and WhatsApps pretty much on everything that's happening minute by minute, hour by hour. It pains me to read each new text, knowing that the news will be beyond disturbing and beyond grim. Unfortunately, my husband and I just learned a few minutes ago that one of his good friends growing up, his daughter, son-in-law, and three children under the age of four were killed. This is something that impacts all of us. I want to give you an update, though, because I want to show you that we are doing something about this, that we are working to help our people. We are not just standing still. It has been a challenging 56 hours by every measure. The first thing we all need to appreciate is that everything has changed. We are a community facing a war in our Jewish homeland, our home away from home. And rest assured, our community, our Jewish Federation, and the Jewish Federations of North America are acting immediately, comprehensively, and completely to support the evolving needs of our brothers and sisters as they defend Israel. Our Indianapolis Federation, in partnership with the Feder Jewish Federations of North America within the last 48 hours, are working to support victims of terror. One component of this, of this effort is the Jewish Agency's Fund for Victims of Terror. We are providing financial support to those families whose homes within the last two days were hit directly by fire, and we're helping them with their, with their most urgent needs. We have heard from the, agent, from the Jewish Agency and others that we support that Israel is in desperate need for doctors and nurses who would be willing to volunteer. If anyone in this room would like to consider volunteering, please call the Jewish Federation offices and we can help you with this. The Israel Trauma Coalition, which is also supported by us, reports that they are working with residents on the southern periphery who have temporarily left their homes and are staying in areas further away from the conflict. They are helping those displaced families, including actually their own employees, by providing bereavement and mental health support. The Israel Trauma Coalition is currently training as fast and as many professional social workers with the additional skill set of being able to deliver bad and tragic news. Right now, and the numbers keep growing, they report over 700 families that will need to receive news on the death of a loved one. The Jewish Agency for Israel is ensuring the thousands, the safety of thousands of new immigrants to Israel who now live in dozens of absorption centers. They are also caring for residents, including Holocaust survivors, in senior housing around the country. They are in touch with thousands of Massa participants, and some of you may have had children in that program. They are also taking charge of pre-army academies and youth villages. The American Joint Distribution Committee has been on the ground ready and prepared for the crisis as it occurs. They will also be supporting Jewish communities around the world as needed throughout this conflict. We have been in contact with the Western Galilee, which is the Indianapolis Federation's partnership region in Israel. They know we are here for them wherever their needs may arise. These are just examples of the important and life-affirming work done by the Feder our Federation's partners in Israel. Locally, we have been working around the clock the last 56 hours to not only help in Israel, but also our local community. Our Federation has partnered with the JCRC all along the way. 
we've reached out to local media, local and national legislators to garner their support for Israel. As a mother of a former lone soldier and the wife of a former Israeli Green Beret, this, like many of us, is deeply personal. I am so proud of how our community has banded together to support our beloved Israel and the Jewish people in this unprecedented time. Thank you. My friends, we gather here this evening to show solidarity with our brothers and sisters under vicious, barbaric attack in Israel, to offer solace and strength to each other, and to pray for victory of good over evil. I've been honored and asked to offer a prayer for valiant soldiers of Tzva Haganah Israel, Israel Defense Forces. And while the prayer recited among hundreds of people has special significance, and power, I remind you that each one of us can and should pray for Am HaYoshev B'Tzion, our nation dwelling in Zion, and for the heroes of the Israel Defense Forces. Every morning when you recite the Shema, whisper a prayer for the young men and women in uniform who are up before dawn and who willingly and eagerly rush towards fire to fulfill their mission. Every evening, when you recite the bedtime Shema, pray for the soldiers on their night patrols, protecting their homes and their families, our families. I encourage you to consider putting on tefillin daily. Deuteronomy 28, Quote, and the nations of the world will see that the Almighty's name is written upon you, and they will fear you. This explains Rabbi Elazar in the Talmud refers to our tefillin. And while I can't scientifically show you the connection of putting on tefillin in Indianapolis, I firmly believe that every time we do, it adds strength to some soldier going through some hell hole in Gaza. I encourage you to make every effort to light the Shabbat candles. As the Midrash teaches us, Imatem mishabarim nerot shel Shabbat, ani marelecha nerot shel Tzion. If you will be careful in lighting the lights of Shabbat, I will cause to burn brightly the glorious lights of Zion. And along with prayer, I encourage you also to tap the other two of our world pillars mentioned in Pirkei Avot. Make Torah study a part of every day, even if only for a few minutes. Have a pushka, remember the blue box? Have a pushka in your home and give tzedakah every day. The merit of these mitzvot redounds to Am Yisrael, and particularly in Eretz Yisrael. We pray now that the Almighty watch over our dedicated and valiant soldiers and crown their efforts with success in protecting the land of Israel and the people of Israel. Am Yisrael Chai. Mishabeir HaVotein Av Ramitz Yaakov, who yivarech et chayel et salva hagana li Yisrael, ho omdim ha mishmar atzeinu v'arei alakeinu mil gvul alavanon abed bar mitzrayim. Amen. He who blessed our forefathers, Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, may he bless the fighters of the Israel Defense Force who stand guard over our land and the cities of our God from the border of the Lebanon to the desert of Sinai, from the great sea until the approach of the Arava, on the land, in the air, and on the sea. May the Almighty cause the enemies who rise up against us to be struck down before them. May the Holy One, blessed be he, Preserve and rescue our fighting men and women from every trouble and distress, from every plague and illness. May you send blessing and success in their every endeavor. 
May he lead our enemies under their sway. May he grant our soldiers salvation and crown their efforts with victory. And may there be fulfilled for them the verse, for it is Hashem, Almighty, your God, who goes with you to battle your enemies for you to save you. Amen. Amen. Thank you. Good evening. I am Rabbi Jordana Chernow Reader. And I've asked tonight to lead us in a Mishar Berach prayer, a prayer for healing. And tonight we think especially of those who are in need of healing, those people who have been injured or kidnapped, those people who have lost loved ones, those whose lives will never ever be the same, and all communities everywhere who are hurting this evening. So please join me in reading the Mishar Berach prayer that is written on your handouts. Mishar Berach Avotenu. Amakor habraha liimotenu. May the source of strength who blessed the ones before us help us find the courage to make our lives a blessing and let us say Amen. Mi shabera imotenu. Amakor habraha leavotenu. Bless those in need of healing with refuash lema, the renewal of body, the renewal of spirit, and let us say, Amen. And let us hope that this healing comes soon to all who are in need. Good evening, friends. Uh, before I read from uh, my remarks, I want to echo some comments from earlier speakers. It's very gratifying to look out here and see not just the Jewish community, but the non-Jewish community showing up in support, uh, in solidarity. As Jacob said, it, it really does mean the world to us, and we'll need your support now and very much in the future. Um, my wife and I, we, we landed in, uh, in Indianapolis Saturday from Israel. Uh, about two-thirds of the way into the flight, I started to receive some frantic text, text messages from friends um, unbelievable descriptions. It reminded me of 9-11 when I heard that the Pentagon was hit. I thought that that clearly doesn't happen. It can't happen. And I had those same thoughts as I read these text messages. And then I read uh, another text message that, that my dear friend, Ophir Lipstein, was killed. Ophir was the mayor of the Shah Negev region, which is the region of villages near the uh, eastern side of the Gazan border. He was an amazing man, a visionary, uh, and he was in Indianapolis just a few months ago. Uh, he came to meet his peers in politics and agriculture and high tech and to attend the bar mitzvah of my son Jonah, who's here tonight. Uh, he uh, just on Friday sat with my uh, wife and daughter. Uh, this is Friday, this is a few days ago, in the region outside of the Gazan border, and he pointed to an empty hill and he described his vision of building a factory, uh, uh, a factory of high-tech workers that he was going to uh, import from Gaza. He had already secured the permission for a number of work permits, thousands, and he had dreams of interacting uh, with Gazan neighbors. Uh, only God knows the future of those dreams now. Uh, after the uh, meeting in, in, uh, near the Gazan envelope in, in, on Friday, uh, he took my daughter to, back to her school. She's studying abroad in Israel. She's still there now, running every time a red alert goes off to a bomb shelter, scared to shower, uh, scared all the time, really. And um, uh, he had some work to do up in t uh, near Tel Aviv. He woke up Saturday morning uh, to the news of, of war and atrocities, and he did uh, what, what any public servant would do. He got in his car and he drove down to the kibbutzim uh, and uh, he tried to defend the people he loved and he died trying. It's really a tragic loss. It's a loss for us, for our family, because he was a dear friend, but he was a friend not just for our family, but for this community and for the Hoosiers. Uh, you know, he, Hamas, it, it, they take hostages, uh, children, elderly, disabled. They kill indiscriminately. As Erwin said, these are not freedom fighters, this is not resistance, this is terror. 
Hamas places no value on the life of an Israeli, Druze, Christian, Muslim, Jewish. They target civilians, and the destruction left in their wake is beyond description. I think our Western sensibilities can't really fathom this type of terror. This is unlike nothing we have seen before, and the future sadly will not resemble the past. I fear this situation is going to get worse before it gets better for Israelis, for innocent Gazans, for all the children living under the terror of this Hamas terrorist organization. For us, it will require strength and unity to weather this storm. And the unity we need is the unity not of the Jewish community alone, but of the entire community. And with that unity and strength, we can do it. Thank you. Please rise from Warner's Cottage. It gadal vid gadash shemeraba, vi alma div rach irutei, vi amlich malchutei, v'chayei chon uv'yom echon, uv'chayei dechol beit Yisrael, v'agalal v'izman kariv v'imru amen, yehei shmei raba mevarach le'olamu me'omaya. The <laughs> Say shalom in Ramav, who has say shalom. Amen. Veil call Israel, veil call Yoshve Tevel, ve Imro. Amen. Amen. Please be seated. This April, Secure Community Network, or SCN, the official safety and security organization of the Jewish community in North America, along with the Jewish Federation of Greater Indianapolis, hired retired FBI Special Agent Bradley Swim, our next speaker, to serve as our regional security advisor to the Jewish Federation of Greater Indianapolis and the Federation's Safe Indiana Security Initiative. SWIM retired as the Training and Leadership Development Program Director for the FBI's Denver Field Office after a 25-year career. Most of his career was spent conducting or supervising counterterrorism investigations and initiatives, including seven years leading Denver's Joint Terrorism Task Force overseeing all domestic terrorism matters across two states and serving as the Pittsburgh's field office lead FBI case agent for all 9-11 related leads and evidence control after being among the first FBI personnel on the ground at the Flight 93 crash site. Bradley Swim. Greetings, it's truly a humble honor to be before you this evening. In my short time here since my arrival, arrival early this summer, I've already come to appreciate the deep compassion, the commitment to family and community, the big hearts, but also the big challenges that face this community. One of those ongoing challenges is living lives in the freedoms and blessings that this country affords, while doing so with appropriate consideration to the safety and security made necessary by the dangers of the era we live in and also the threats by the various ideologies that target the Jewish community. 
We have heard recently from the highest levels of the U.S. government that the U.S. stands ready to offer all appropriate means of support to the government and people of Israel. I can assure you that our federal, state, and local law enforcement partners are similarly committed. I know firsthand that these men and women work tirelessly to detect, to prevent, and when necessary, to respond with all urgency to threats against our community. To that point, I would like to point out and personally welcome the leader representatives from Indianapolis Metro Police Department and Carmel Police Department who have joined us this evening. And within the community, the Jewish Federation Safe Indiana Security Initiative created by for and with all of our local Jewish community partner agencies, synagogues, schools, camps, and other Jewish organizations has for the past three years worked collaboratively to enhance the safety and security across the metro area. The program has continued to grow and evolve with resolute intention involving more and more communities across the state such that we are now poised to bring consistent training physical security standards, information sharing, and crisis management, crisis management support to every Jewish community and organization across the state that wishes to join us in this critically important effort. While it has been horrible to hear the accounts of the ongoing atrocities in Israel, I can assure you that neither SCN's 24-7 cadre of intelligence analysts who are scouring the darkest corners of the internet nor our law enforcement partners have observed any credible threats currently targeting the North American Jewish community as a result of the aggression by Hamas. Let me say that again. There are currently no known threats to the Jewish community in the US or in Indiana. SCN, law enforcement, and the intelligence community continue to actively monitor for any potential sympathizers or those inspired by the attacks who may consider taking action against Jewish facilities domestically. We should remember that in the past, there have been several events and incidents in the U.S. that were reportedly motivated, at least in part, by the conflict between Israel and Hamas. These have included the targeting of individuals, houses of worship, and institutions with acts of physical assault, vandalism, or harassment. We also know that even domestic incidents that seek, incidents that seek to disrupt our daily routine, routine can come without warning. Reports of anti-Semitic incidents domestically are already much higher than in years past. This is why we must remain vigilant. Not paranoid, not fearful, but also not in denial that something could happen here. We should all remain consciously aware of our environment as we go about our day. Not on autopilot, oblivious to our surroundings, but aware that bad things happen. Some accidents, some intentional harm, happen every day and are a part of this fragile life. But this is exactly why we have these initiatives, these partnerships, these processes in place ahead of time, for every day and for a time such as this. I am confident from my short time meeting just a sample of the incredible men and women of this community, the leaders and those who benefit from their leadership, that you, that we, will continue to demonstrate resiliency and strength, not fear that demoralizes and stops normal activity, and not denial that deceives that through this tragedy, not only will our preparedness and security be enhanced, but so will the bonds of this community grow even stronger. Thank you. Hi. I'm Mark Suarez. I'm the CEO of the Great Jewish Federation of Greater Indianapolis, and I'm also the father of a former lone soldier. I want to thank again Erwin Levine for being our MC here tonight, to Congregation Beth El Tzedek for hosting us, to the Federation and JCRC professionals and leaders for truly stepping up in this time of crisis, to all of our community leadership and our clergy for your leadership during these difficult times, to our honored guests, for joining us in solidarity here this evening, and of course to everyone assembled here tonight to stand with us in support of Israel. I want to read for you a few words from an email that I received just a few hours ago from Major General Daron Almog, who's chairman of the Jewish Agency for Israel. In all my years in Israel and in the IDF, I never believed that we would reach such a terrible scenario in which hundreds of innocent civilians are on the front line many of them murdered and kidnapped, 
including babies, children, women, and the elderly. We are being exposed to horrific scenes from dark times. Yesterday evening, I was informed that six of my family members were murdered in Kfar Gaza. Chen Amo Goldstein, Nadav Goldstein, and their daughters Yam and Agam, and their sons Tal and Gal. We are facing a long military campaign, the extent and severity of which we still do not know. So I am asking you to stand by our side and do as much as you can. We need you with us today more than ever. The state of Israel is the state of the entire Jewish people. Those in Israel and those in our commu Jewish communities everywhere, our strength is our unity is now not just a slogan. The sense of shared responsibility, love, and togetherness inspires pride and hope. This is why you have a federation. For 100 years, your federation has been providing funds to support the state of Israel. We were there before 1948 for its establishment as a Jewish state. We were there for wars in 1956, in 1967, in 1973, and now tragically we are adding the year 2023 to that list. At some point in the coming days, Israel is going to have to go into Gaza, door by door, and do whatever they need to do to rescue those hostages and to make sure that Hamas can never do this again. And when they do, there are going to be casualties, and some of those casualties are going to be civilians. And at that point, unfortunately, I think we all know that, we're going, that, the, that the tone that we hear on the news is going to shift. And once again, the world is going to turn against Israel. But we know better. We're going to remember how this all started, and we're going to remember how we feel right now at this moment. And we have to be there to remind people that Hamas terrorists waged this war, not against the Israeli military, but against a mayor who had dedicated his life to peace, against teenagers who were attending a concert in the desert, against Holocaust survivors, and against families with young children. Israel needs our support now more than ever. When you came in this evening, you were all given a little quarter page. On one side of the page is a link to the Jewish Community Relations Council, and it will take you to the resources that I know everyone's looking for right now to answer the questions that we all share. On the other side of that page is a link to contribute to the National Federation campaign in support of Israel. 100% of the dollars that you contribute to that campaign will go directly to Israel. There is no cut, there is no overhead, there is no one's taking anything. It's going to go directly to those organizations that Helen described when she was up here speaking so beautifully. So please, take out your phones now, take them out when you get to the car, go online and make your donation. Then keep this piece of paper, put it on your refrigerator, and use it again in the weeks ahead as things get bad. And think about what you might want to do. You can use it as a resource to help you answer questions that your friends and neighbors are going to have for you. And if you want to take more action, you'll know how, what you can do to help Israel's most urgent needs. Thank you again for coming this evening. I'm Yisrael Chai. I would now like to welcome cantor Aviva Marer, who will be leading us together in the singing of Ose Shalom. And I invite all clergy, community presidents, and organizational leaders to join cantor Aviva on the bima and ask everyone else to please rise as we join together in Ose Shalom, followed by very brief closing remarks. I'm joined by my friend and colleague, our Cantor Emerita, Janice Roger. May the one who causes peace to reign on high and reign in the high heavens, let peace descend on us, on all Israel, 
and let us say, Amen. Amen. Please join us. Oh, say shalom in Roma. Seated. In closing, I was struck by the words of a man in a different type of struggle, Martin Luther King, who said, there comes a time when silence is betrayal. Following up on what Mark said, as you leave here tonight, think of what you will do tonight over the next days, weeks, and months to support the people of Israel. Speak up. Reach out to, affect, to our officials of both parties here and in Washington. Speak up a lot. Bother them a lot. Let them know that this matters. Let your friends and coworkers know that Israel is important to you. Let your parents or your kids and grandkids know how important Israel is. Give all that you can to support Israeli causes that are and will be in desperate need in the months to come. For only if you do that, only if you do more after you walk out of these doors tonight, Will you be able to truly look in the mirror and say, I did my part so that this will never happen again? I'm Israel Chai. Good night. Shalom. And you may exit from either side of the auditorium. Good night and shalom.